This is Bill and Deb North of the Florida Weekend Warriors. Yeah, we're not doing a Florida adventure this weekend. We are heading to Alaska. To Alaska. So join us on this bucket list adventure. We have always wanted to do this. We were supposed to go on a cruise last year and it got canceled because of COVID. So we are renting an RV. So come along with us. We will see you there. See ya. See ya. It's going to be a couple of long flights. It's 3,800 miles. We're currently in Seattle, which is the hub for Alaskan Airlines. Then we fly into Anchorage. We get our RV rental at the Great Alaskan Holidays. Then we're going to go to Seward. Then we're going to be camping on the Homer Spit. Then we're going to be camping at Cooper Landing. And then the Portage Glacier. It should be an epic trip. And we'll see you soon. It's been a long flight, but our flight's an hour early, and we were originally going to spend the night in the RV the first night because we were going to get in so late, but I think we're going to be able to pick up the RV tonight and take, take off. I took the safety course online, so I just need to get to Great Alaskan Holidays an hour before they close and so we can leave and get it provisioned and head towards Seward. As soon as you get your luggage, sorry, call the Great Alaskan Holidays shuttle to come pick you up. The check-in process is pretty simple, it takes about a half hour, and they go over all the insurance and the other extras you can buy. The one extra that I really suggest that you get is getting the propane so you don't have to fill it up when you come back. Make sure you document and record all the damage that is to your RV. These are extremely used and our sheets showed nothing on it at all. I told the check-in lady about all the scratches and stuff on the RV. She didn't seem concerned and she was kind of hesitant, but she did come out and mark all the stuff on our sheet showing that it was previously had all these scratches and stuff on it. What I was really concerned about is this main cargo hatch was damaged and both the driver's seat, passenger seat and the bunk beds were all extremely stained. And I wanted to make sure that that was all marked on, on the sheet that um, you basically sign when you pick it up. What's it look like in here, anything damaged? Actually, looks better inside than outside. What's that? I put that scratch on there. Oh, there's a bunch of them. We got provisions at the Super Walmart and the Fred Myers, which is actually a Kroger store, which is close by, and we're heading to Seward. The view is amazing. You can see all the homes up on the mountains as you head out of Anchorage. We don't have any reservations for the first night, but you can camp basically anywhere. There's stops all along the road we can pull off and boondock overnight, but we're going to stop at the Alaska Resort. It's a ski resort in Girdwood, and you, you don't need a reservation. You just pull in the parking lot. You put $20 in an envelope in this uh, little box at the entrance, and the reason we want to stay there, there's a nice little bakery there where we can go and have breakfast in the morning, and we can just walk to it from our RV. The views going down the highway towards Seward are just epic. It's so pretty, it almost looks fake. The road to Seward is really good. And when we got there, there was actually a little brewery, but we were just too tired and exhausted from the long flight. So we basically just had to go to bed and start fresh in the morning. Good morning. It's our first morning here in Alaska. Yesterday was a long day. 11 hours on the airplane, 6,000 miles, but we're finally here. And you can see we're at the um, uh, Alaska? I believe so. Um, ski resort, just $20 to um, boondock in the parking lot. So it was a long, long day yesterday, but we're here. So we're, we're heading to breakfast. We're heading for breakfast. We're going to the bake shop. We'll see you. See ya. It's about a six minute walk from the RV parking lot to this restaurant here called the Bake Shop. That's right where the tram, there's a chair lift right there. All right. It's all uphill though.
It was all uphill, but we finally made it to the bake shop. We had ordered omelets, and the little kid next to us got a cinnamon roll. It looked amazing. They bake all the bread for the whole area. It's really a cool spot, and the flowers are beautiful. Here's our view at breakfast at the bake shop. It was delicious. It was very good. Yes. Awesome. Just a little tour of the outside of our RV. The 31H. It's a bunkhouse model. Got a nice big spot to put cooler, firewood. It goes past through, goes all the way through to the other side, but the hole on the other side is pretty small. And uh, just some small compartments on this side. And the slide out. Got a couple of boo boos on the camper from other renters. Here's a view of our campsite. It's not really a campsite, it's literally just a parking lot. So we rented our RV through Great Alaska Holidays. So this is a 31H Winnebago Mini Winnie. So when you look at the front, it's kind of nice because you have a full bed here. Kyle and Nick, you're gonna sleep there. It's a big bed. It's probably about seven feet across, probably a full size, maybe not a queen. And there's plenty of storage up on top, both above and the sofa and the dinette. the dinette. There's storage underneath the dinette. Now, this is a little used. Because of COVID, they weren't able to change out their uh, motorhomes like they normally do. This one's got 38,000 miles on it. But the inside is actually nicer than the outside, which is... So it's got an oven. Opposite. It does come with all your silverware. It does come with, we ordered a we coffee, ordered coffee pot, that was 10 bucks. And then it does have the pots and pans. Microwave. And it has pantry up here. We have our food up there. Nice size refrigerator. It's propane and electric. It comes free with a cooler. We just took showers, so we put that right there. Um, we do have a room for our luggage. We have um, the towels. They gave you two towels, two big towels per, per person. person. So that's nice. And we got the blankets. Plenty of blankets. And this, this is, is the bed. master. Now this is a short queen, so our feet kind of hang over a little bit. So. But we do have plenty of storage in here. But the good news is about it, the slide out can be all the way in. You can still get in the bed. Yes. And there's all kinds of cabinets and stuff over here. In the bathroom, it's a nice size bathroom. The only bad thing is no place to really put the towels. The design spot for the towels is right next to the toilet, and we really don't want to put our towels next to the toilet. So, anyways, it's a pretty nice camper. Um, we got plenty of room. We got the bunkhouse basically just to store our luggage, because um, we we have a bunch of bags to store. So, we'll give you a tour of the outside later. It's raining right now, <laughs> so we'll see you later. Some of the things that we learned on this first part of our adventure. The RV didn't come with everything that we needed. It did not come with a scrub pad, dish soap, paper towels. It only came with one roll of toilet paper. It only came with four um, toilet um, toilet treatment treatment containers. So the big thing is, is when you look at the utensils, it did have one spatula. Um, did not have any hot pads. It had two plastic trivets. It had one dish towel. The pots and pans, one skillet, one big um, pasta pot, one small pot, and one medium-sized pot. They were very expensive pots, but they um, everything seemed to stick to them. Well, they were stainless. There was no Teflon coating, and you only got one skillet, which was kind of difficult sometimes cooking with just one skillet. We ended up using a pot for a skillet. So it would probably also to benefit you if you were doing the same adventure is to make sure that you do have um, little things like there was no napkins there was you know so what we did is we just used uh, bought an extra roll of paper towels and just use those for napkins. Yeah the picture online the picture 
What you see is what you get. You get nothing extra more than that picture. We had to get some, um, like, there's no cookie sheet, so we had to use, uh, go and get some cheap foil. So the other thing is our grill. So we did go ahead and purchase the grill through them, which was, I believe, $25. Now, we didn't get the deluxe model. We just got the basic propane. So we did get two small half-used propane bottles. So when we went to Walmart to provision, we did buy an extra propane bottle. The first, every meal that we purchased, we did purchase meals to cook outside. So unfortunately, the first meal, the grill would not completely burn the whole entire grill, only one small little section. So we tried to clean it, we tried to do everything. It just didn't have a grease splatter, so everything grease came down and hit all the burner holes. So that was very frustrating. Um, we did try to talk to them when we got back and tell them that it did not work, but because we had just used it that one time, they would not give us any refund from the grill. If I had to do it over again, I just got a cheap thing from Walmart you can use charcoal and then just you know some of them you can buy the charcoals already in in the little pan and it's a one-time use that probably would have been a better option it does not come with an awning so we did have a lot of rainy days so we had to actually the day that we did try to grill we had to actually put it up underneath the slide to try to keep it out of the rain the other thing so they do provide you with a cooler and when we purchased when we picked up the rv the cooler was inside the shower so what we did is we just moved the firewood around we did purchase firewood at um, fred meyer and we the grill and charcoal excuse me the grill the um, firewood and the cooler all fit in that big hatch so that was perfect so that made it a nice when the guys went fishing they just put their fish in that so that really was a nice thing so the nice thing to have was to have that cooler because that enabled us to take that cooler and go on little picnics and when the guys went fishing they just put the fish in the cooler we did rent a car the cars are extremely expensive there but we used a corporate account and it was only $38 a night and they were charging like $300 a day um, to other people that were renting cars. So it did help. We saw a lot of extra stuff by having a car, but you don't need to have it. Like in Seward and Homer, you could basically walk to everything. But the weather wasn't the greatest while we were there. We had two phenomenal days, but we had a lot of rain. So having that car, we left the camper at the RV site and we were able to go exploring with the car. So the car made that little extra excitement because well, we, we, just were saw, able we just to saw explore. more stuff than we were planning on seeing. But the epic part of this entire trip was the fishing trip at a, at a, at a Homer. And I can't wait to show you the next video. This video is getting a little long, so we're going to cut it off here. But we'll see you in Seward. See ya. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we will see you in just a couple days. See ya. See ya.